want to look at the uh, model ARB receiver and the model ATP transmitter in this video. Both are World War II vintage Navy aircraft equipment, radio equipment. Uh, first we'll start with the ARB here. ARB, they made about 30,000 of these during the war. And they're uh, fairly common. They were mated up with uh, a variety of different uh, transmitters. Some of the accessories or uh, components that go with this uh, ARB is uh, one is the tuning head or uh, coffee grinder. You see that? Uh, it's connected by a cable uh, to the tuner. And this would give the pilot or radio operator the ability to uh, uh, crank this and then tune the uh, frequency. This radio came with two different control boxes. Uh, one was the, the pilot's version, which is the one you see here. And the other one is the uh, operator's um, control box, which is this one here. Both are very similar in functions and features, except that the operator's has a local remote switch on it. And this gave the pilot ability to override the operator through a cable that would move this lever if he, uh, if he needed to. Uh, there, there's a five position switch in the bottom here. Uh, it's off, CW, MCW, uh, sharp filtering, and, uh, and broad filtering. There's also the uh, band switch on the top, uh, audio uh, output. On the bottom here, there's two uh, jacks for headphones. And this box has all the same features like, other than the uh, local remote uh, box. The A or B was sometimes also made it up with a uh, navigational aid. Uh, it would be the ZB or ARR1 series receiver, which is uh, which we have here. Uh, it was powered by an auxiliary plug here that made it up with the auxiliary output of the uh, receiver here. And uh, this radio would uh, fit nicely on these two studs on the top and could be locked in place. The navigational aid used a uh, DU-1 antenna system here, a directional antenna as you can see. And uh, the antenna was fed through this uh, antenna relay box. So that would be an additional feature you, would, you might find on uh, your ARB. So that's uh, pretty much the basics of the ARB. Uh, again, it's four bands. Uh, it covers 195 through uh, uh, 9 megs. Uh, it's powered by 24 volts with an internal dynamotor. And um, what we'll do now, we'll put some power to it and see what happens here. As you can see, you can see the small dial light here. And hopefully you can hear some audio coming out of it at this point. Now we'll use the coffee grinder I showed you earlier. And you can see as I turn this, that the frequencies change. There's some code. Switch that over to CW. Okay, so now if I wanted to change bands, I could do this two ways. I could use the bands I switch here local, and it only goes one direction. Or I could flick on the motor and I can change bands here through the remote control. Now watch the lever, you'll see this move as I change it. And we're back to that. So that's basically the ARB receiver, main functions and features. And uh, now we'll uh, take a look at the uh, ATB transmitter. Okay, this is uh, the ATB transmitter. Take the cover off. 
ATP transmitter was made in um, a much smaller amount than the ARB receiver. They made about 30,000 of the ARB receiver. They only made about 4,000 of these transmitters. So they're a bit, uh, a bit hard to find nowadays. Um, the transmitter covers 3.2 to 9 megs. Uh, it's covered with two removable tuning units. And uh, it is powered, I'll move this over here, by a dynamotor. This also uses a control box, very similar to the uh, in size and shape to the ARB, uh, voice and code switch off channel 1 and channel 2 with your code key. Not much else on there. Most everything on the ATB is uh, preset before for flight. A couple of the accessories you might find for the ATB is a spare tuning unit. If I get it out, it comes in this nifty little carrying box. You can see that. And there it is. So you could have a spare tuning unit uh, to throw in there, probably already preset. As you can see on the tuning units here, uh, it gives you the antenna tuning, your PA tuning, uh, and your antenna coupling, your master os oscillator tuning. Uh, everything's done through the front. This is very similar uh, to the ATD in the way the tuning units work if uh, we've seen the ATD transmitter. One other item for the uh, ATB transmitter, since there's no meters or such on here, is uh, there is a meter, metering box. There's two holes in the top where the metering box would attach. So it's some rubber feet here so you can stick it up on the top. Okay. One would plug into your tuning unit. The other one is for plate. And it will plug into your PA plate down here. The ATB has several different uh, jacks in the front. Microphone, throttle, side tone one, side tone two. Keying in, in the plate as I just showed you. So that would be the metering box for it. Uh, another neat thing about the ATB, it also will accept a dynamic or a uh, carbon mic. There's a switch to change the two on there. So what we'll do now uh, is uh, fire up the uh, ATB. Okay, we'll switch on the power. Let it warm up for a second. We have put it on voice so the dynamotor doesn't run. Uh, the uh, ARB antenna relay is controlled through the ATB here. Uh, the ATB puts out about uh, or is rated about 25 watt CW and I think um, 20 voice somewhere in there. I, I think I'm getting a little better out of it than uh, the rating uh, into a 50 ohm load. So uh, what we can do is uh, demonstrate it's two different tuning units here. This one's for 80 meters, this one's for 40 and that's controlled through this switch. Channel 1, channel 2. Now but you can hear the solenoid click and what it does is moves it, all the switch contact over to this tuning unit and then I can move it back over to the 75 meter again. Holding down the microphone starts the dynamotor putting it on CW starts the dynamotor and this keys the plate So there you have it. There's the ATP tra ATB transmitter. Easy for me to say, huh? Hope you've enjoyed this video.